Okay, welcome back to the second part in the CS350 tutorial. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk about the basics of GDB. Um, all the information that I'm going to talk about is also available on the course website. If you go under assignment information and then debugging OS 161 with GDB, which is under reading and reference material, you'll find a excellent write-up on pretty much all the steps that I'm about to do. Alright, let's get started. So, the first thing you'll want to do, um, if you're working on the undergraduate system, you need to make sure that the shells you're using to debug are connected to the same host name. So, to ensure that this is the case, you will fire up your shell and connect to one particular host. So, in this example, I will use, so you will use your username here, I'm using the 350 account, at let's say linux 024.student.cs.uwaterloo.ca okay um, you can verify the hostname that you're on using the hostname command now to use gdb you're gonna have to use two shells so you'll do the exact same steps for the second shell just to ensure that you logged on to the same system okay so here's two shells already set up and ready to go the first thing we'll want to do is have a look at our uh, root directory. Let's do this again. There we go. Um, this has everything exactly the way that I showed you in the first part of the video. Uh, the only difference that I've made is that I have already implemented the uh, hello function that assignment zero is asking for. And I've done this to show you some debugging based off that function. Okay, so I'll just jump right into it. Okay, so what you want to do is fire up Sys161, Sys161 with the, let's do it with the minus H flag. So the minus H flag stands for help and it shows you all the parameters that Sys161 can take. For this video, what we're interested in is the W flag, which starts Sys161 in debugging mode. So we'll do just that. We'll start Sys161 and give it the kernel that we'd like to debug. So unlike the previous attempt, this time when we execute with minus W, Sys161 won't start the uh, kernel right away, but instead will, as you can see here, is waiting for a debugger connection. So this is where we need our second shell. So we go over, we're still in the root directory on the other, on the, uh, other shell, um, and we will want to use CS350 GDB and the kernel that we used on Sys161. Okay, so we're in GDB. Uh, we haven't connected anything yet. We've just started up GDB and given it an image that we'd like to debug. The first thing you have to do is tell GDB where the object files are that you use to uh, create your kernel. So these files are in the staging area that I showed you in the first part. So to add these to the search path of GDB, you'll want to execute the dir command and then if you've followed all the instructions from before it will be under this path dot dot slash os161 dot 11 slash kern compile ast0 okay uh, and then the second step after firing up gdb is to actually connect gdb to the sys161 debugger so we're doing a remote connection and if you're following the instructions on the website you can see the command is target remote unix colon dot socket slash gdb okay so as i hit enter here sys161 accepted our new connection and we are stopped immediately at the startup code of the kernel so the debug has connected but it's paused so the first thing we'll do is let's set a breakpoint before we do anything else we'll set a breakpoint in the hello function that i've added so we'll type break, which is the command to set a breakpoint, and the name of the function I'd like to break in. So I'm going to use hello. GDB will tell you that it's created a breakpoint. It assigned a number to the breakpoint for later reference, uh, the memory location at which it's going to break, and then also some uh, metadata, which is the file and the line on which you're going to, which is going to break on. Okay, so the breakpoint set. Now we'll want to execute the kernel and see when we hit the breakpoint. So to do this, you use the continue command. Continue will just continue execution of your program until 
you hit uh, any breakpoints. So I'm going to do that. And there, we hit the breakpoint. So we have the uh, startup information from OS 161. Uh, everything is the same as we did before. Um, note that this is the seventh compilation. And after all of this information has been printed out, I added my hello command, which is now going to print out the hello world, as you should do in assignment zero. So on the right in our GDB, we see that breakpoint one was triggered in hello, which resides in main hello.c, line 14. And the next line to be executed by GDB is this kprintf hello world. One useful thing you can do at this point is use the list command, which shows you 10 lines surrounding the line that you braked on. So I broke on, uh, on hello here, and then there is 10 lines all around that. Um, so for illustration purposes, my hello function does more than just print hello world. Hello world. I also implemented a, another function called test, which accepts an integer. Um, what test does, and I can use the list command to just have a look at test. Here we go. Uh, test accept an integer, and it just loops over a number of times as indicated by the integer and creates a sum, a geometric sum, and then returns it. Um, what we can do as we, since we have our breakpoint set at line 14 in hello, we can now, instead of continuing and just waiting for the next breakpoint to hit, we can now uh, execute step-by-step -step instructions. So to do this, we'll want to use the next command. So next will execute the next instruction, but not enter into any, it will not traverse deeper into any stack frame, into any uh, uh, f um, execution frames. So what I mean is that it's not going to show me the internals of kprintf, it will just execute kprintf and then ask for input again when it reaches line 15, which is uh, the, the invocation of test. So let's do that. Okay, we've executed the kprintf, our hello world has shown up, and our next line to debug is uh, line 15, which is test. So another alternative, if you actually want to traverse into a function, is instead of using next, you can use step. Now step is the exact same thing as next, except that it actually steps into a function instead of, step, instead of stepping over functions. So I'm going to use step, and we see that I've now stepped into test. GDB tells me that, uh, go away, go away. Uh, GDB tells me that the parameters passed into test are this variable i, which has value 10, and it's telling me again where the breakpoint lies. I can of course hit list again. It shows me line five is here. So this is where I actually break. I can step further. Now as a shortcut, you can just hit enter with no command at all, which will execute the same command as uh, you've executed previously on the previous line. So if I hit enter now, I just execute another S step. And now I can traverse through this list and it will go 10 times. So something interesting to look at is I've executed this for loop a bunch of times. Uh, I might be interested in what the value of t is at this point. So to dump some information, we can use the basic print command and give it a variable. This is the most basic form of, of uh, looking at data in your current running image. Okay, we see that t has a value of three. Now this dollar one in the front is an internal GDB variable uh, you can refer to this output again. Um, so if I, for example, run a couple more iterations and then type print $1, I get the same output as I did before, even though $1 is just a saved value. If I type print um, t, we'll see that I've executed the loop two more times. Um, a similar function is printf which is the printf that you are used to in C. Here you give it a quoted format string. So I'm going to do percent %d with a new line and then comma with the number that, let's actually print out the index and the current sum. So these are going to be two integers. The index is t and the sum is s. There we go. So we're, we see that the sum is ready at 60 and this is the fifth iteration. So far, so good. So let's say that we want to break. Let's have a look again at test. We want to break, set another breakpoint. Let's set it at 
Uh, let's set it at this line here. So we say break, and instead of saying just a function name, we'll say the function name, colon, and then the line number. So in this case, 8. Uh, that would be incorrect. I actually want to say the file name, which is hello.c, colon, and then a, a, a line number, so in this case 8. And I should probably say break. Okay, so we've set the breakpoint number 2. So one thing that you might want to do now is look at all the breakpoints you've already set. You can use this during the info command. You do info breakpoints, and you see your two breakpoints that you have set so far. Okay, let's hit continue. And we can see that we hit the breakpoint again, the breakpoint that we just set here on line 8. We can do our, our printing of t. Uh, okay, we're in the sixth loop. So let's say that you want to print out a certain value every time you hit a breakpoint. This is where the display command comes in. So what I'm going to do is simply hit display and give it a variable that I would like to print out. So as long as the variable is visible um, at the time that you hit the breakpoint, it'll display it. So I want to see the sum. I want to see the sum every time that we hit a breakpoint. Okay, here we go. So every time I hit continue now, I hit a breakpoint and it uh, automatically shows me uh, the value that I want to display. So I can do the same thing for the index variable t, hit continue. See, this is the eighth iteration and the total is at 80. I'll do it again. Um, we're at iteration 9, 90, and so on. I just realized that I'm not computing the geometric sum, I'm just adding 10 on each iteration, so that's that's my bad. Okay, so let's continue. Here's one more step. Continue to step. So now we have stepped out of test. And we're back. Are we back? So one, th one way to look at what function you're currently executing, uh, or how deep in the call stack you currently are, is by using the backtrace command. So simply type backtrace, and you can see that we're currently executing the test function on line 11, so we're just at the return statement, as you can see here. Um, our test was called by hello, which was called by boot, which called by kmain, called by start. So here's your call stack, some useful information. I think I'm running out of time in this video. So I'm going to cut it off here and continue with some more advanced stuff in the next video.